it's done doing it. But there's a lot of things that folks just don't know. And it's no fault of their own. Because there's nowhere that you can go and learn about. You just have to know that it's done a certain way. And once you know that it's done a certain way, then you go, wait a minute. I never thought about it that way. Give you an example. Black women in America have very little political influence or power. Now, some people are going to say, wait a minute. We have our nation's first female vice president. And she identifies as a black woman. And you wouldn't be lying. This is true. But influence and power in politics is not only about numbers and positions. It's about being able to organize and craft. And that, that we don't have in this country for black women. A lot of groups have it at the local level in America. But for black women in America, they don't even have it at the local level. It's not at the state level. And even at the city level, it barely registers. So, that's the way politics go. If you don't have power and influence, you have no voice. You might get a little bit of representation. Because in politics, it's also a game of whoever the best candidate is wins. People like the person who's saying the best things. And who's going to give them a shot. And oftentimes, in impoverished communities, black women campaign, and sometimes just recently, have been winning elections. This is a recent occurrence. A very modern occurrence. This is not something that's been happening forever. But what you often see is once a black woman is elected, there's very little support institutionally or at the grassroots. So what you have is often an attack from conservatives who say black women in leadership are a failure. Now it'll be the conservative governance that will have completely failed. And then as soon as a black woman is elected, if the mess is not cleaned up in 15 minutes, the alt-right, the fascist white supremacist conservative Nazis will sit online and chastise and criticize. We know this. It's because there's no influence. There's no grassroots support. Now, you look at the South. You have to take a deep, hard analysis of the South. The history there. And then you realize, wait. No southern state in this country's history has ever elected a black woman to be a governor. You go, whoa. Isn't that surprising? So you've had a few senators, and by a few, I mean two to three. You've had a few 
congressman. Now you're getting a few mayors here and there. But the governor, the governor is over the state. It's over all of the citizen troops. And you've never had a black woman as governor in any southern state in America's history. Now, how can that be? Especially when proportional a large chunk of African Americans live in the southern portion of America. It's crazy to think about it because there's so much racism. Ahmaud Aubrey. But we get racism up north too. We're not immune from it. You get it in the Midwest. But the difference is the South. They refuse to elect any black woman to be a governor. Georgia came very close with Stacey Abrams. And she probably would have won had the Republicans not employed dirty tricks, as they always do. And their primary go-to dirty trick is voter suppression. So there were thousands upon thousands of people in Georgia who were registered. But they weren't put on the active voting rolls until after the election of Brian Kemp and Stacey Abrams. They were only added to the roll after the election, even though they registered prior. So they couldn't vote. And wouldn't you know, a vast majority of them would have supported Stacey Abrams. I'm not saying that Brian Kemp wouldn't have gotten any of those votes. But there were enough votes that would have put Stacey Abrams over the top if there had been a fair election in Georgia. And we saw, fast forward in 2020, when those voters were put on the rolls, what happened? Biden Harris won Georgia. Senator Raphael Warnock won the Senate. Senator John also won his Senate seat. So we know it makes a difference. Stacey Abrams could have been governor. But Georgia, you're lucky. She's given it a second crack. And this time, we all gotta have Stacy's back. Because it's gonna be tougher this time than the last time. But this time, we're all awoke. And we're awake. And we're ready. Well, are we ready? That's my discussion here, to see if we're ready. There's 21 million women in this country who identify as being black women in America. 21 million women in America identify as being black women. That's a whole lot of women. That's a whole lot of black women. And the vast majority of those women vote. And they vote for Democrats. And then people say, well, you vote. But you don't get anything in return.
Now, here's where people get stuck. They're like, purple people's out. I vote. They never do anything. I'm dissing, I'm dissing Chanty. They all are bums. It's no big deal. I'm tapping out. This is where I gotta back you up and let you know how politics really works. Because this is what they never tell you. It's not just about voting. You're gonna say, oh no. You gotta organize and do the one knocking. Yeah, that's true, but it's not just about that either. There's one thing that they never tell you about that's really, really important. It's called money. Money is the most important thing in politics. Not voting. Voting. They know people are going to vote. But they don't know if you want to pay. Why is it important? Now you say it's pay for play. Kind of. But you have to understand everything is technically pay for play. When you watch a pay per view fight, you pay HBO $19.99, I believe, for the fight. I don't know. I haven't done it in a while. You're paying to watch. A sport. You're participating. You're paying to participate. Millions of other people, you gotta think about this. To understand it, you really have to think. Millions of other people are also paying to participate with you simultaneously. If I pay to watch the fight and you pay to watch the fight, we're both watching the fight. We might not even know that we're watching the fight. But the person, the company you're paying to watch the fight, they know you're watching the fight because you paid them. In politics, a lot of the citizenry don't know that is not free to govern. You say, wait a minute. You gotta pay politicians to run for office? You do. It costs a lot of money. You gotta think about all the things that they need to do in order to spread their message and to campaign effectively. You can campaign with no money, but it won't be effective. You won't have very much reach. I'm prime example of this. We spend no money on advertising, and therefore we stay well below the radar. We know who watches, but to you, you don't know, see it. If I was campaigning, I would have to raise a lot of money to campaign. You gotta pay to travel. It's not free to travel across Georgia. It costs a lot of money. Have you seen the gas prices of late? If you're on a campaign bus, that bus is gonna cost you hundreds of dollars just to fill it up. So Stacy needs gas money. Stacy needs gas money. You don't think about it like that, but she does. You gotta think, what do you need? Because they're gonna need it too. Stacy needs food. You're like, wait a minute. 
Why would Stacy need food? When you have a campaign, you have volunteers. You gotta feed them. The volunteers do it for free. Out of the kindness of their heart, they want to participate in the system. Maybe they can't contribute money, but they contribute their time. And time in the system is money. Let's be honest about that. So Stacy needs food, just like you. So you gotta think, whatever you need, Stacy needs it too. And everything costs money. So that's why campaign contributions are super important. People will say, oh, it's not important. I'm not going to give money to a candidate. And then when that candidate loses, because they were consistently outraised by their opponent, you only have yourself to blame. You didn't send a red hot pen. You never do. And they know this. Because they can see who participates and who doesn't. You can't see it on your end, just like the people you fight. But they can. Now, if you don't pay to participate, it's not the end of the world. It's not like they don't have to do anything for you. They still do, because they govern over you. But, Will, you're probably the last priority. And it's not because you didn't pay soul to participate. It's because you don't know the game. So they feel like if you don't even know the game of politics, they definitely know you're not participating. Here's the thing. It's very simple. In politics, it's all about who benefits and who loses. There's 21 million black women in America. If every black woman in America gave $5 a month to Stacy, she'd raise $105 million a month. Do you know no candidate in American history has ever raised $105 million in one month. If you just said auto pay and said, I'm going to give Stacy $5 starting in May to November, that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. May, June, July, August, September, October, November. $35. Now think about that. $35. $5 a month. If 21 million black women supported Stacey Abrams for $5 a month, she weighs a hundred and five million dollars in one month. Unheard of numbers. She'd have everything she needed to run an effective winning campaign and be the first female black governor in the South's history. And then what are people going to do? They're going to take note. Now, just one politician you funded. You don't have to fund a bunch. You've just chosen one. 
You said you all support Stacey Abrams. She went to Spelman College. She's one of you. You chose one politician in 2022 to give $5 a month to. And she's pulling in $105 million every month. Everyone on the media is going to start talking about it. Now they're like, wait a minute. They're able to give $105 million to one candidate per month. We can't even match this as billionaires and millionaires. They can't. It's against the law for them to give more than 2500 per candidate. So they go around and circumvent that by creating super PACs and giving millions of dollars to fund super PACs. But you as citizens, if you give $5 a month, you can outraise any super PAC in America. Stacey Abrams would have $105 million for sure from just one constituency group. She's going to get money from other people too. She's already raising a fucking load without your support at all. Everybody knows that black women get those emails. And they don't send three or five dollars at all. They just delete. You're playing it all wrong. And they know it. Five dollars a month. Think about that. You spend five dollars on scratch off tickets in a day. Probably like 50. There's Stacy's money right there. How much do people spend on alcohol in a month? Probably hundreds, if not thousands. There's five dollars for Stacy right there. Everybody indulges in cannabis. There's five dollars right there. And then, can you imagine what Stacy is going to tell the other politicians? Now they've got a gold mine. Stacy is raising $105 million. No candidate can keep up or compete. Now they're scared. Now they're going to respect Stacy because you got her back. And if you invest in something, you're more likely to participate too. Because you want to see a, a return on your investment, an ROI. You're going to be like, now that Stacy's elected, this spot in our community needs to be fixed. We need money for this community center to be built. We need to invest in training over here. And Stacy can direct the resources that you've never had before. You know, nobody breaks down politics like this. They don't tell you because they don't want you to know. They want to be able to control the system completely. 
don't tell you for five dollars a month if 21 million black women send five dollars for these neighbors a month that you would have serious control over the system now you just wouldn't have representation now you would have control when you think about it, you're like, for five dollars, I can have that much impact. That's a pretty solid investment. You're like, oh, people are like, why did nobody tell me this? Because they don't want you to know. George, you ready to hope? But also, pay the play. Give Stacy what she needs so she can run the best and most effective campaign in American history. So she can run a Georgia that works for all Georgians. Not what Brian Kemp is doing. He doesn't work for all Georgians. Even the lunatic from Mar Argo is mad. But his reasons are insane. Think about that. That's real black woman power. Even the vice president. They don't even have to ask the vice president. Madam Vice President, did you see that Stacey Abrams raised $170 million in May? No candidate has ever raised $170 million. Ever. Do you know the Vice President is going to say? More than likely. Politics is being done different now. The American people are participating. And black women are a part of the American people. They're just not told about participation. 